Before we get to work installing the new fuel flow sensor, I should explain what an NMEA2000 network is if you didn't know. It's the network standard adopted by the National Marine Electronics Association. These networks can display a variety of gauges, measurements, and levels all in real time. The network operates at 250,000 bits per second versus the old NMEA183 network, which only operates at 4,800 bits per second. The network is a bus type with terminating resistors at both ends. Any device on the network can be up to 6 meters from the bus, and the network can be up to 100 meters long. That's a pretty big boat. The network uses a series of plug-and-play T-shaped connectors to connect devices within the network. Once the device is plugged in, the other devices on the network interact with it, and all of the devices recognize each other. Our network on our boat, for example, has a Garmin 1243 XSV multifunction display, which has the GPS coordinates, heading, tachometer, speedometer, battery levels, oil pressure, fuel pressure, water pressure, coolant temperature, seawater temperature, VHF radio information, and the radar, all working together and displayed digitally. This network replaced all of these gauges. We're now going to add a fuel gauge that will not only automatically populate onto the Garmin display, but also the rate of fuel consumption, how many miles per gallon, and how long until the fuel runs out, all calculated in real time. It helps you find the sweet spot where the engine runs most efficiently, which is helpful if you're on an extended trip. Say you're going to the Bahamas or you're going down to the Florida Keys. There are a variety of sensors that are available from many different manufacturers, from fresh and black water level sensors to the temperature of your refrigerator or even your live well. The sky is pretty much the limit. All you need is 12 volt power and a drop cable and a T connector. First, we have to get into the engine compartment and then locate the fuel line. There are two different fuel lines coming off of the fuel tank. One of them goes to the generator and then the other one goes to the engine. Once you locate the one to the engine, you want to put the fuel flow sensor in between the tank and the high pressure fuel pump. It has 3 8 inch barb fittings on it that fit into the fuel line just like a fuel filter and make sure to take note of which way the flow goes because the gas has to push the sensor in the correct direction. Make sure that the key is turned off so the fuel pump is not energized and it's helpful to disconnect the battery just to eliminate any danger of fire or explosion. Once you locate the fuel line, just cut it in half and put the sensor in line and secure it with hose clamps on both ends. The Garmin kit includes a fuel filter, but I already had one in place, so I just saved this as a spare. The fuel filter should be installed prior to the sensor. I have had comments about requiring two hose clamps on a fuel line. The American Boat and Yacht Council standard recommends two clamps for exhaust and fuel fill systems only. When you're done the installation, don't forget to wipe up any spilled fuel and always run the blower for about four or five minutes before attempting to start the engine. Once that's installed, use the included zip ties to fasten the sensor and wiring. Next, it's time to connect the drop cable into the NMEA2000 network and also connect the 12 volt power supply. In this particular case, they gave you lots and lots of extra wire, so I ended up cutting some of it off. The wiring also includes pigtails for connecting to a 0183 network, but since we're going to be using the connectors into the 2000 network, they're not going to be used. Next, it was time to go to the gas station to fill the tank. We knew that it held 100 gallons according to the manual, so I would use that to calibrate the Garmin. We needed to add about 60 gallons to fill it. This was the first of two transactions. Calibrating the fuel tank was easy. I went from the home screen to my vessel, and then fuel, and then add fuel to the boat. I set the tank capacity for 100 gallons, and then in the future all I'll have to do is say, fill all tanks, and it will show that they're at 100%. Now it's time for a sea trial. 